Well, there's actually been a little bit of unrest here in Namir this morning. Just north of, of the capital, there was a, uh, an unpleasant incident where a large number of visit, uh, villagers from uh, the, the locality of St Louis, a fairly troubled area, essentially forced the highway to close. What they did is they took cars, they took debris, uh, and they took tyres, they dragged that over the road and they set it on fire. Uh, there's been an enormous police response. Uh, several dozen police have now moved in along with several heavily uh, armed vehicles. Uh, they're trying to clear the road but there's no sign yet when the situation will be resolved. What this really speaks to is some of the ethnic and social divides that, uh, that, that remain here in New Caledonia in the wake of the independence referendum. Most of the people, it's a generalisation but it's true, most of the people who voted uh, in favour of independence uh, come from the Kanak community, an indigenous community. They remain angry about the fact that uh, independence still hasn't happened and they remain frustrated by what they say are the fundamental inequalities of the system as it exists at the moment. Stephen, you mentioned this ethnic divide. Can you take us back or unpack the outcome a little bit more because the result was a little bit closer than most had anticipated? Yeah, that's right. Most polls predicted a result of at least 60 to 40 per cent uh, in favour of staying with France and some loyalist leaders said it would be an even more convincing result, some 70 to 30 per cent. Uh, but that didn't eventuate. The final result was much closer and that, despite the anger we've seen from some Kanak communities this morning, has actually given a lot of hope to some independence leaders. They say they're essentially now within striking distance and they're optimistic about their prospects of success at future referendums in 2020 and in 2022. Also interesting to note, some loyalist leaders anticipating a big victory said there'd be no need for those further referendums which have been promised by the French state. I think in the wake of what was a surprisingly close result, that chatter has probably died away and the realisation is dawning now that these negotiations are going to continue and that politicians and everyday people in New Caledonia are going to continue to debate the question of independence for years and possibly for decades to come. Well, you mentioned those uh, future referendums in 2020 and 2022. It would suggest that this, uh, this vote does not settle the question at all of independence. No, it's certainly not settled yet. And people inside the pro-independence camp, if anything, are more convinced than ever that at some point independence is inevitable. In other words, that it's a question of when and not if. That does stir great anxiety, though, on, on, on in, the, in, the, um, in, the, in the white community here. There is a feeling amongst many people in the European community that, one, New Caledonia simply isn't ready for independence, and two, that uh, financially it would be unviable, that New Caledonia would risk sliding backwards in its, in its standard of living were it to embrace independence and abandon some of the generous subsidies that come from Paris. These questions are fraught, they're complicated and, above all else, they're very difficult for people here in New Caledonia. What's clear the day after the vote is that they're going to be wrestling with these questions for a long time to come.